Hello viewers and uh, welcome to this uh, special edition of the One on One. My name is Babu Karsi. Thank you so very much uh, for your company. And on this special edition, I have with me Mr. Sadibu Kamaso, a GFF aspirant candidate for the 2022 uh, football elections in the country. Mr. Kamaso, thank you so very much for giving us this opportunity to have a one-on-one -on -one with you and uh, welcome on board. Thank you, Mr. C. It's a pleasure coming here. Thank you very much. Uh, the Gambia heads to the polls uh, to elect a leader that will steer the affairs of football uh, in August 2022. And uh, you've come up, come out not long ago to say you want to contest for the hot seat. Um, the first question I want to put to you is, uh, why do you think stakeholders should uh, vote for you? Very good question. Um, we we'll also take this opportunity to welcome our viewers. Um, first of all, what I would like to say is it's an open secret that the Gambian football is at a very critical stage at the moment. And it needs serious-minded people to be able to get it out of the current situation. I believe that I have what it takes. I have the professionalism. I have the enthusiasm. I have learned on the job. I have the experience to be able to take us out of these problems that we're facing, which are very critical. Otherwise, our football is supposed to grow at a faster speed than it is now, and we're still lacking behind. So I think I am very much in a good position to be able to run Gambian football. Few ago, you launch your manifesto, and you call it the starting 11, something we're hearing for the first time. And uh, your slogan, you know, that I've been hearing from people is restore confidence. What confidence do you really want to restore? Of recent, or should I say over the past years, there has been a substantial erosion of confidence in the Gambia Football Federation. This is very much out there. You walk across along the streets and you tell people you're from the Gambia Football Federation, they just, you know, look at you with another eye. And this is something that you need the population to be able to feel that they belong. And in order to make them feel that they belong, you need to gain their confidence. And if you have a substantial erosion of confidence in an entity that people are supposed to come in and play a big part, I think there's a need for people to do whatever it takes to restore that confidence back. I sit as a board member of the Gambia Football Federation. Sometimes people see me and then they say certain things about the Federation that you feel the Federation could have done better. So we sat down as a team and believed that that confidence that people are losing from the Gambia Football Federation needs to be brought back. That is why we're saying that we need to stimulate interest and passion in order to be able to bring football and its benefits to the doorstep of every Gambia. Um, when Kaba Bajo's late executive won the second term in office, you were copted in as an executive member. One watching right now will be like, well, he's been part of the you know, confidence loss that he's talking about. Why do you think you are the right person? Because you know, the problem, as you rightly mentioned, have been there for years and you've been part of that executive. Why should we believe that you're the right person to change the narrative to a positive direction? Certainly. I mean, you do not have to be outside to make a change. Oftentimes, when you're in, or should I say when you're within, that is when you know the inner intricacies, the problems better to be able to solve them. People would make certain claims from outside, but they do not have a better understanding of what is actually happening inside. Yes, I am a co-opted member of the Gambia Football Federation. I sit at the policy-making table. Now, what it is, is democracy is the minds of the majority. I play a huge part. I bring in my ideas. I do things. I bring in ideas that I believe can move football forward. But then again, it depends whether the person implementing is doing what ever ideas that you're bringing in. I did say this time and again that it is like you set in a starting 11 and that brings me to the name of the starting 11. You feel in a team of players, 11 players, you're still part of the team. Just because the team is not performing does not mean you need to quit. What you can do, you can either reinforce or bring in fresh new legs that have you know, newer ideas to run it. So I feel because we have a starting 11, we have a team which is the executive. And we believe that there is a position where we've started running out of ideas as a group. Some of us who have ideas, we bring them on board. But if those ideas are not implemented, if they are not taken, 
as a team, what you do, you bring in a new set of players as substitution so that the game changes. So we are saying we are making a substitution so that the game can go forward. It is not an issue whereby you have ideas and you're not bringing them or you're part of the team and it does not work. No. You stay there and you try to make a change because out of our love for our country and immense passion for the game, we believe we can still make the necessary changes so this can go forward. Well, is this substitution in line with uh, the rest of the squad members right now? Currently, Well, it's not every time that you want to make a substitution and everybody accepts it. Um, I had said this in the past, even the best player leaves the pitch at some point. You have a captain, you have your best player. There are certain times when they start losing you know, um, grasp of whatever is happening. So what the coach does is bring in fresh new legs, you know, that have fresh ideas to change the game and turn things around. So that is what we're doing. Uh, we know there are certain areas where we're weak, and that is what we want to do. And again, the GFF is not a monarchy. This is democracy, and that's the beauty of democracy. You know, anybody who has the eligibility criteria to be able to contest for the presidency can contest. And we have seen recently, since we announced our candidature, a lot of work is being done, you know, to convince the stakeholders. So if that is what it takes to make people work, we are happy to do that. But we are seeing this as a way of bringing in new ideas. Because you get to a point where you run out of ideas, and there are people who can bring in this. So we have a starting 11 in, and they are playing. Now our captain, or the best players, you know, have started running out of ideas. So what we're doing, we're injecting new blood, fresh new blood, to make sure we achieve the success that we want. I, I, I love the, the name, the starting 11, and let's still stick to, you know, the, 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 the football language. You call it the starting 11. And, um, you know, I've speak to many people since the launching of your uh, manifesto or your starting 11, and they're like, why didn't he resign when he knew things were not working well? You know, things were, the, the things that they promised stakeholders, Gambians, have not been achieved, or most of them have not been achieved. He could have easily resigned, but as we speak, you are still an executive member of the Gambia Football Federation. Why? Okay, first of all, before I get to the starting 11, the question is, why didn't I resign? If I resign, I feel I'm failing the stakeholders. Yes, I am co-opted, but it was adopted by the executive and the General Assembly. <clears throat> if I was co-opted and the General Assembly rejects it, I cannot sit there. So I sit there as somebody who has been elected. Now, being co-opted there, I have a mandate and I have something to serve the people. I was part of the people that were campaigning. And in fact, I was campaign manager and there were a lot of promises that have been made. If you get to a point where you're playing a match as a team, because I wanted to use football language so that everybody can get to understand this well, because there are a lot of people out there who just see this game as a game of sport. And that's the reason why we call it the starting 11, so that people understand that a football team is composed of 11 players who go on the pitch. We're using the starting 11. We don't even want to use the word manifesto. We're using the starting 11 to, better make, to make people better understand how football is run in our quest to stimulate interest and passion for increased stakeholder participation. So in this, serving there and resigning, it doesn't make any difference because my resignation wouldn't have helped. Isa Hayatu was CAF president from 1988 to 2017. I mean, and he was vice president of, of, of FIFA throughout that period because as, as a CAF president, you become a vice president. He was, you know, a vice president to Blatter. He stood against him in 2002. He didn't resign from the FIFA executive. He was still serving. Ahmad Ahmad won against Isa Hayatu when he was serving as executive member of CAF. He didn't resign. Um, even Augustin Senghor and Ahmed Yaya were all CAF executive members and they all contested for the CAF presidency, you know, during the last election. Although one of them, you know, had to back out, both of them had to withdraw. But then they were all vying for the same position. I mean, that's the beauty of democracy. You know, I mean, it's not something that, you know, other people would say you do not have to contest because you're in it. No, I should be there to be able to learn on the job and also be there to call, you know, raise the red flag. There are times when you feel some things are not going the right way. You could be in a position to say, hey, guys, I believe we could do this this way or we could do it the other way. Have you done that? Series of occasions and on, on, on a number of occasions. I have, I have always been that. I'm a vocal person. I'm the type of person where who sits in a meeting and always express my opinion and say it where I'm supposed to say it. I'm not the type that would go on social media and start saying, you know, this is wrong and that is wrong. But whatever I'm supposed to say at an executive meeting or wherever it is important, I do that. But I sit there 
I was in the, I was I was part of the finance committee 2014 to 2018 because I was part of the setup. I was in the finance committee. I resigned because of certain things that I didn't match my aspirations or my ideas. It didn't make a difference. So coming back again, if you call to say, okay, let's come and serve again, and then you come in, and things don't go according to what you envisage or what the people who you are serving want, you do not have to resign. If I was the head, yes, but I'm not the head. So I believe I can still stay there to learn and make the right you know, choices and make the differences. But resigning does not, does not make a difference now at this point because I am failing the stakeholders. If I was the head and I feel things are not going the right way, yes, I could resign. So if I understand you better, uh, this is a team of 11 players and the captain and few other key players are not functioning. Thus we will need some substitutions done. And uh, somebody also said, well, I hope the guy can make plans, you know, they just want to continue the run, so they just want to change somebody. So this is a deal between Sadibu and Kababa to just make a substitution. Maybe internal changes, I will call it, hence we are speaking the football language. How true is this? Well, they might, you know, people are at liberty to have different opinions to certain things. But uh, I can assure the football stakeholders and everybody watching that that is not their idea. I mean, we wouldn't sit and waste our time and the time of the stakeholders to do something just to fool people around. You know, we love this country and we have immense passion for this game. What we're doing is something that is really serious. And as I said, we have immense passion for the game and we love this country. I have put in so much of my time and energy into this. And it's not just myself as an individual, but I have a group of people who are behind me. I have a team. So if they are seeing it as myself and the incumbent, that is not what it is. You saw the launching. There were other people there, and there were other people who were behind us, who were people of high esteem in this country. That is not the case. We, I mean, that, that would be unthinkable. What we are doing is we want to change football for better. And as I said, if you are playing a game, your intention is to win. The game is not going according to plan. You're making a substitution. You could be in the same team and yet you have you know, divergent views because you are seeing things from a different perspective. Sometimes you make a substitution and the player you're substituting feels they're not, they not, they, they not supposed to be substituted and sometimes they storm out of the pitch. So what we are trying to do is to move football forward. The incumbent has been there for eight years. And I've said this, you cannot be doing the same thing all the time and expect different results. So if you have people who have fresh ideas, I think the best thing to do is to give them the opportunity to say, okay, you can come on, do this so things can work out and then we move. So maybe, you know, the, it could be an injury to a certain player and, you know, you could bring in, you know, fresh new legs to change the game. Good. Let's get to your starting 11. Uh, by the way, I have the, the starting 11 with me here. Um, I, I read it, I went through it, and it looks very exciting. I hope um, if stakeholders give, give you the opportunity, you know, we will, this uh, document will be transmitted into a reality. Uh, but before we get into the starting 11, you will agree with me uh, that a lot of promises that we have made to stakeholders and the football-loving nation, uh, the Gambia, you know, most of it are not achieved. There are quite a number of uh, promises that were made. I mean, I've said this, in football, the two most important things are a ball and a pitch. Currently, the league is only being played at two pitches. That is, uh, the Live Your Dreams Sports Academy in Basori and the National Technical Training Center. Even the National Technical Training Center is not a stadium, that's a training ground. So you do not have, excuse me, you do not even have a place for people to sit and watch the game. I mean, if you are running football and you do not have pitches, what are you running? I think that is the primary thing that we should work on. So we are thinking that whatever you are doing, there has to be things that are of utmost priority. Because without the league, without the clubs, the Gambia Football Federation would not exist. Forget about all these other things that are around. Even the regions. Without the clubs, there won't be any regions because they are running the third division. Without the allied associations, the allied associations like women's football, school football, without the clubs, they wouldn't be there. So, you know, the players, the clubs are the primary stakeholders and they need to have proper places to be able to play. So we want to do something that benefits, you know, these people so that our football can move forward. But otherwise, we're just going to be going in circles and not making any progress. So that is even the reason why, as I said earlier on, we're calling this the, the starting eleven. Because we want to stimulate interest and passion. The starting 11, so people understand there are 11 players on a pitch. 
starting 11, all the, at the, the different points, we give, we've given them numbers. So that people start growing interest in the game. Because everybody has a role to play. They have we have primary stakeholders, we have the secondary and the tertiary stakeholders. Even the people who sell drinks, the people who sell food at the stadium, they all play a big role. So that is what we want to do. So we want to do a bottom-top approach and get everybody involved so everybody plays a part.